When you feel like your life is crumbling around you, you could actually be on the verge of your next big thing. If you'd rather get into a car accident than go to work because you hate your job, you actually could be on the verge of finding your dream career. If you padded with picking up the tab for your yet again unemployed boyfriend, you're actually on the verge of finding a fantastic relationship. Certified hypnotherapist and master life coach, Laura Richer, wants to show you how to use your breakdown for a breakthrough in creating a life you love. You're listening to Laura's hit new show, On The Verge Radio. And good morning and welcome to On The Verge Radio, broadcasting here on Transformation Talk Radio. Today and always, I'm thrilled to introduce our host, Laura Richer. Good morning, Andy. Good morning, and I'm your co-host, Andy Lucas. And today we are continuing our series on self-esteem. Laura, I read a recent study by a Montreal-based company called Psych Tests, and they uh, interviewed 6,700 people and found that 68% of them believe they are unworthy of love Mm -hmm. and admit that they don't like themselves. And 70% felt that they were not good enough for anyone. Yikes. Yikes is right. Over the, <laughs> over the past few episodes, we've really been working on building healthy self-esteem. Um, and we've taken a look at just in our day-to-day lives, in our careers and, and jobs. Um, and we've also done some episodes about toxic relationships. So yes. today we're going to be combining the two because... Yes. If 70% of the people feel like they're good, not good enough uh-huh. to have a relationship or worthy of love, there's some scary relationships happening yes. out there. They're going to find themselves right in the midst of toxic relationships. Yes, and we do not want that. So today we're going to give our listeners the seven do's and don'ts that will be really helpful to rebuild uh, self-esteem after you've been in a toxic relationship. Yes. And that shows up all the time in my practice. I work with clients who have been in unhealthy relationships that have done a little bit of damage and they want to get back out into the dating world, but they're kind of afraid. Yeah. Or they're jumping right in. Or they're jumping yes. in too soon. Yes. Which so is we will crazy. talk about both of those things. And what would you say to somebody who's gotten out of a toxic relationship? Well, congratulations for making a healthier <laughs> yes. choice. Yes. And uh, that, that is probably the hardest part is mm-hmm. to make that decision to go so that you're already on the right track. Um, but I would say you also need to reflect. Um, I think every experience that we have is beneficial, even negative experiences. In fact, sometimes negative experiences really help us get clarity yes. on what we don't want in our lives so we can focus on what we do want to create. Um, so it's just good to take a little time to reflect to see, you know, has there been some impact? Is there some damage from having interact, had a, having a negative relationship and what healing work needs to be done so that mm-hmm. you can let go of all that old garbage um, and next time around connect with somebody that's going to be more fun, healthier, all that good stuff. And nice. And nice. Yes. Yeah. What do you say to people who um, are in a toxic relationship right now and think they can rebuild their self-esteem in that place? Anything is possible for anyone. However, I would (laughs) guess that, you know, 99.9% of the time that is not going to work. When you are constantly interacting with negativity in any aspect of your life, whether it's a job that's really negative, a person that's really negative, um, but especially a toxic romantic relationship, which is what we're focusing on today, you're just getting that negativity reinforced day in and day out. And so it's going to be next to impossible to build your self-esteem. You know, so get out first yeah. and then rebuild. Like I can't stay on a diet when my cupboard is full of donuts and ice cream and potato chips. And just I mean, maybe <laughs> I could, but it's a lot harder. It's a lot yeah. harder. Yeah. You <laughs> have to have a padlock on that cupboard. Exactly. Especially me. So For sure. So back to those people, the 68% who admit that they don't like themselves mm-hmm. in that study. What do you think it means to not like yourself? I think that is different for different people. But in general, I think it's the idea that I need to be different than I am. So there's something Mm. about me that I think is wrong or shameful or needs to be changed in some sort of way. And not that we can't work on ourselves and and want to make changes in our lives. That's completely healthy. But if if you're using that as a way to say I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy for love or I have to have low expectations because there's really not that much for me out there, then it's a problem. Wow. And that is, that is kind of the, 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 the basis of a low self-esteem is not really liking yourself or believing in yourself. Or thinking that you need to be different than you are. 
Yeah. yeah. And you deal with that a lot where I know that you've had people come to you who need to be corrected from being, and for those who can't see me, those are air quotes, air quotes <laughs> corrected for being an introvert, for example. Yes, that, and we did another show on building self esteem. And sometimes it, the only work to do is just accepting who we are, that we're all different and we're all beautiful in our own way, and that we don't all need to be one way, that it's okay to be different people. I mean, that's what we're supposed to be. So, yes. if you're introverted, you don't need to be extroverted. It's okay to be introverted. If everybody in the world were extroverted, I would be terrified. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, nobody would be listening. <laughs> well, that, that's true. I'm sorry. What'd you say? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the other way around, you know, if everyone was introverted, no one would be talking. We need to have a healthy balance right. of of different personality types and different skill sets, and so that is all good. So I think the low self esteem often has to do with thinking I need to be different than I am. Yeah. Um, or thinking in order in this particular uh, situation in relationship. Thinking that in order to for somebody to love me or in order for somebody to want to be in a relationship with me, I need to be thinner or smarter or more successful or less successful or whatever it is. Yeah. And you, um, in your practice, you have a program called your Self-Esteem Boost. Yes, I do. What is that? How does that work? So the Self-Esteem Boost is a pro. I, so I work with three different modalities in my business, uh, a type of energy work that's called Reiki yes. and then hypnotherapy um, using hypnosis as therapy and then uh, coaching. And I use a combination of those modalities to work with clients to help them build their self-esteem. The Self-Esteem Boost is an eight-week program where we work together um, Try to find out what the self-esteem is rooted in. Maybe mm-hmm. it's old childhood stuff or negative past experiences. And then work to look at it in a different way so we can see our skill set and our life experiences in a positive light and use that to our advantage than to our detriment. Yes. Because having self low self-esteem and hating yourself is not going to yield any of the results that you want. <laughs> no, because yeah. you have always said you, the mind looks for... The proof of what it believes is true. So yeah. if I believe that I am not worth anything, I will identify circumstances and situations where that's going to be reflected back to me right. and actually be attracted to them. So if I believe that I'm not lovable, watch out. A lot of people who don't love you are going to show up in your experience. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's true. And the people who do love you, you won't be able to receive that love because you won't feel like you deserve it. So, And you'll question if something's wrong with them. Why does that person love exactly. like me? I'm not lovable. Exactly. Yeah. So okay. there's really, you know, you want to cultivate healthy self-esteem so that you can have a happy life. I mean, it's pretty simple. Yes. Sweet, or a good life. relationship. Yes. So back to toxic relationships. Mm-hmm. How, what are some of the feelings that somebody's going to have after they've gotten out? Because I think there might be a misconception that, okay, I've been in this toxic relationship. I got out. Now uh, the sky's the limit. I can do anything. But you've been beaten down. So there's probably a little bit, everyone is different, but for most people and most of the clients that I work with, there's a little bit more work to do. And it's a good time to reflect and say, so what got me into this situation in the first place? What was I attracted to about a person that was unhealthy for me? Was it that I did not believe that I was worthy? Was I attracted to characteristics that maybe aren't in line with my values and maybe I need to reevaluate what it is I'm actually looking for in Mm -hmm. a partner? Um, And then also notice sometimes people have healthy self-esteem and get into kind of a toxic or negative relationship and they leave the relationship feeling bad about themselves and Mm -hmm. then they go out into the dating world, which, as we know, you need to have a healthy self-esteem when you get into the dating world. Um, And then they just find more of the same. So to avoid that experience, it's good to take some time, reflect on what has happened, what you've learned from the experience and let go any negativity that was accumulated during that time so that you don't recreate that situation because that's very common people get stuck in patterns of trauma and they just keep recreating the same situation over and over on totally unconsciously they don't want to be in a negative relationship but because they haven't healed the part of them that's attracted to that kind of a relationship it keeps showing up and it keeps showing up absolutely um i would uh i'm sorry what are some of the after effects of a toxic toxic relationship So after a toxic relationship, you can maybe feel unsure of yourself, um, even to the point of not even knowing what your own likes and dislikes are. Mm -hmm. If somebody's been telling you that, you know, maybe you're really interested in video games or comic books and that that's wrong and makes you a bad person, all of a sudden you're like, well, you know, is it okay for me to like the things that I like? Mm -hmm. Um, 
you might be afraid to date again. Yes. And that, I, with a lot of the women that I work with, that comes up a lot, is that I am scared to meet somebody new because I don't want to, now I've gotten out of this toxic situation, I'm feeling good about my life as a single person, and I do not want to attract that same person again. Right. So there's some fear that you will recreate that situation, which for someone who's really self-aware like that, they usually don't. They usually have learned from the situation and you're not going to recreate the same situation again. You yeah. should be able to identify, hey, there's some red flags here. This is what got me into trouble before. However, the next type of person, the person that just wants to jump right in really quick, wants somebody else to be kind of their emotional Band-Aid, mm-hmm. um, they might keep getting into the same situation over and over, but not realize why that's why that's right. happening to them. So that's another thing is wanting to get into another relationship too quickly in, to avoid processing what has happened in the last one. Um, some other things are people become codependent. So they feel still like they're responsible for that person that they've ended the relationship with. Maybe that person is dysfunctional. Maybe they're mm-hmm. an addict or not able to manage their own lives in some sort of way. Um, so they feel responsible for taking care of them and guilty for making the choice to be, do something positive for themselves, which they absolutely should not. It is your job to take care of you. Nobody not some, else is going to do it. Yep. None of us were put here on this planet to self-sacrifice totally for somebody <laughs> else. Um, and somebody who is asking you to do that is not someone you want to be in a relationship with. Correct. And then I think another thing is kind of letting yourself go. Just like I, you know, just feeling totally depleted. Yes. So I don't, you know, have you found or ever found yourself in a toxic relationship? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, I was living in Los Angeles. And the thing is, I think when you get into a relationship that even has the warning signs at the beginning and you allow yourself to continue like I did, you have to already be at a low point. Mm. So I was living in Los Angeles, which was not an easy city for me to live in. Um, It just, I, the type of people there, I mean, everybody kind of has an agenda. There's the whole Hollywood thing and very plastic. And um, although there's probably amazing people, there are a lot of amazing people (laughs) in Los Angeles. And uh, one of my dearest friends lives there and she's, but it wasn't your scene and you weren't from there. It didn't work for me. And it was my first time living on the West coast. My whole family is in Ohio. I had moved there from Boston. And so I felt very alone. Um, And in the span of one month, all three of my, I'm sorry, all four of my good girlfriends moved away and not just like down the street, like one moved to France, one moved back to Boston, Mm -hmm. one to San Francisco, all of that. And I uh, was laid off from my job. And I just felt like I had, I had nothing. I was very depleted. And so feeling lonely, vulnerable. And I met crazy uh-huh. is is how I refer to him now. <laughs> and it was not good from the start. Mm-hmm. I knew it. And then it just kept getting worse. And it it was I didn't realize how low my self-esteem was when I was in it. And when I got out of it, it was like, oh, my I did. I can't even now looking back because that was 10 years ago, mm-hmm. I, 11 years ago. I can't even identify with that person right. who was in that relationship. Right. But at the time it was. Yeah. And I think that that's what happens for a lot of people is you lose your sense of self in a toxic relationship. So you stop recognizing who, you know, who you are. Mm-hmm. And once you get out of it, you kind of feel like, oh, my God, who was that person that was in that relationship? What just what even just happened to yes. me here? And I, fe- I did feel kind of shell shocked and mm-hmm. I got out of it and felt very depleted. Mm-hmm. I felt very depleted in it because right. then I did get another job. My job was toxic. My relationship was toxic. And. I was sharing, um, I had a roommate who never cleaned the house and was kind of a stoner. And so it was like I was giving to everybody else. I never gave to myself. And it was very, very difficult. Yes. And it sounds like it. Yeah. So the other thing that I felt like I noticed is that getting into that, my, and how bad it got, it didn't happen overnight. It no. was kind of, a, it was a quick decline, mm-hmm. but it still, it wasn't, it didn't start horrifically. It kind of got there. And I think it's easy for that to happen and people forget about that. And And I think that's, you know, if somebody was horrific the first day that you met them, you probably wouldn't get into a relationship. Maybe in some cases that would still move forward. But I think usually you might notice some some red flags. But your example is perfect, and I think this happens to people often. For some reason, you're in a vulnerable place. Maybe you're in a city where you don't know anybody 
or, you know, whatever the reason is. And you're willing to just let things go because you want to have somebody to hang out with or you don't you don't want to be single for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's where it starts is being in a place where you're not your best self. Um, And then it slowly starts to evolve. And all of a sudden it's it can be very ugly, very toxic. And you're like, well, how did I get here? But it was a slow, gradual right. process. And I, I think going back to your thing about uns- being unsure of your of yourself anymore and afraid to date, I had chosen that person. Mm-hmm. And so I was really afraid after that. What if I make the same mistake again? Yeah. You know, it's interesting because there's that. I know we have talked about this, but the allegations from I'm not going to say her name right. Chloe Dick. Dijkstra, 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 who was uh, dating TV personality Chris Hardwick, mm-hmm. and she kind of wrote her, she wrote a, a letter mm-hmm. and kind of described her toxic relationship. And that letter, I feel, was very powerful because it's very, these relationships are very common, but people don't want to talk about them because mm-hmm. it's embarrassing to say that you're in an abusive relationship or a toxic relationship. Um, and her letter, her situation was... Um, a little bit different than what you described. I think she was very enamored with what this person brought to the the table, yes. that they were a powerful TV personality, um, had just a lot of connections and And charisma. seems very funny. I mean, he, I first saw him when he was the co-host of Singled Out with Jenny McCarthy, and he was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I don't know what happened in their relationship, just, but just talking about her side of things. But she said in the beginning there were things that were happening, uh, controlling behavior, not being allowed to talk to her friends, um, all kinds of things mm-hmm. that were not were not right in the beginning. But she stayed in it. She also had some issues with eating disorders, and she wasn't in a healthy place for herself right. either. So, No, go ahead. That was on medium.com. Is that where we yes. found that? Okay. Yeah. It's a really, you know, if you're struggling in an emotionally toxic or abuse, abusive relationship, but you're not quite sure if it's abusive or not, her letter is a really great letter to read to kind of get some clarity and insight. It really was powerful when I read it. There was a little bit of PTSD, just hearing a lot of the stuff, the controlling nature of it and everything mm-hmm. and not knowing how to get out of it. And she was in it for three years, yeah. which is how long I was in it with crazy. And it's like you... It seems from the outside to other people looking in, well, just get out of it. Yeah. But it doesn't. It's harder than that. Yes. Yes, Exactly. But it is possible. Yes, absolutely. So do you feel like when someone is in a toxic relationship that it gets worse more quickly because their self-esteem is already lowered and then it gets even lower? Yes. And I think people get out of a toxic relationship because – you will only tolerate the level of abuse that you will, would give to yourself. So if somebody surpasses that, then you're not going to tolerate it anymore. So that's why self-esteem is so important in a relationship. If you don't think you're worth a lot and somebody else is treating you like you're worth a lot, you're going to continue to allow it because that's what you believe about yourself. So it's in line with your own belief system. Mm-hmm. If they surpass that in some sort of way, say somebody is physically violent towards you and that you don't believe you deserve physical violence. Now you're going to be in a place where you're going to start going, wait, you've gone beyond what I I believe is acceptable. Right. Yeah. Okay. So um, how can people get in touch with you if they're interested in this self-esteem boost package? Yes. So you can find us all over social media. Um, You can go to my website, seattlehealinghypnosis.com. If you just want to check out the kind of work that we do, we talk about it on our episodes of On The Verge Radio. So if you go to onthevergeradio.com, you can listen or watch all of our past uh, episodes on video or audio. Um, You can also just give me a call. I offer an hour complimentary consultation to new clients uh, just to learn a little bit about you and your goals and see if the services I offer might help you, which they absolutely will. Um, (laughs) And... And, uh, yeah, that's... And how can someone call you? What's the phone number? Oh, 206-765-8265. <laughs> and you will talk to our scheduler who will get you on the calendar. Fantastic. So can you tell us about some of the clients you've worked with and how you have helped them uh, with their self-esteem issues and what has kind of been the outcome for them? I have seen really radical changes in clients that I've worked with over an eight-week period. And the work that we're doing a lot of times is identifying what their limiting beliefs are, what, you know, sometimes when you say, oh, I don't like myself, I'm not worth anything, and then I ask a client, but why? Why is that? They don't even know why. 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> that Why would happen. you be the person who is not worth anything? Um, so in using hypnosis, sometimes we can really get into the subconscious mind and identify, you know, maybe there's some old childhood programming. Maybe there's some leftover toxic relationship programming that they're not even aware of right now, but it still is influencing their behavior right. in their current in their current life. Um, also, just doing some coaching and talking through and making an action plan, you know, about mm-hmm. for my clients who are dating, you know, if these have been issues that have come up in the past, you know, look for them with people in the future. Yeah. Don't don't keep letting these red flags go. Why is that difficult for us to? Is it difficult to see them or is it difficult to admit that the red flags are there? I think some people just are, they just really want to be in a relationship. And, you know, I can, I, when I was single, I really wanted to find my relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's a sense of, you know, is there anyone for me? And is it it ever going to happen? And, and because they want it so much, they're willing to overlook things or project what they want onto another person. Yeah. I had a client say to me a while ago, like, you know, this was wrong and this was wrong and this was wrong. And, and they were very significant things. And she's like, but, you know, but he call, he texts me back when I text him. So I just I didn't know. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm not That's... laughing. I'm not laughing at her. I just she was like such a, a great person. And I just thought, wow, you know, she could do so much better than that as soon as she believes it. Exactly. Yeah. And her, look at how low those standards were. Right. Standards... Everything else could be wrong. But he texted back. Yes, that's a low bar. That's a really low bar. You need to have your bar set a lot higher than that. Yes. I I was dating somebody when I was living in Boston, and my mom was visiting, and I had to go to the emergency room. I had Mm -hmm. who knows what what ailment I had. And we were supposed to get dinner with him that night, and obviously I canceled. And the next day he called to check on me. And I said to my mom, he called to check. And she said, yeah, he should. Yeah. Like, (laughs) duh. I just, my expectations were pretty low. I know. Wasn't that sweet? He just called to check. Yeah. Well, I think that's what gets us in trouble all the time. My clients that are having trouble, the, the bar is too low. The standards need to be a little bit higher. Yes. And how do you think our standards get so low? Low self esteem. Oh, so it's all trickling. Okay. Yeah. It's all coming back. Fantastic. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Um, and when we come back, we're going to be revealing those seven do's and don'ts for rebuilding your self esteem. So stay tuned for more On the Verge Radio here on Transformation Talk Radio. Are you stuck in unhealthy habits, toxic relationships, or low self esteem? Do you crave a life of inspiration, love, self acceptance, and fun? Sounds like you're on the verge, on the verge to your next big thing. Join Laura Richer, host of On The Verge Radio, helping you use your breakdown for a breakthrough, overcome life's greatest challenges, and live the life you want and deserve. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio or visit seattlehealinghypnosis.com for more information. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show, talk radio to thrive by. I am so thrilled to be talking to all of you. We have got talk radio for all of us. Are you ready and willing and able to accept all of the abundance you can muster up in your life? Yeah. Check us out at drpatcho.com, transformationtalkradio.com, transformationradio.fm. Oh, my goodness. Tune in to E3 Influence Radio. Own your impact. Master your world. In this new hit show, Sarah Luce, empowerment coach and spiritual mentor, teaches us how to achieve our greatest potential to positively affect everything and everyone. The time is now to enlighten our minds, empower our hearts, and take energized action to raise the consciousness of our planet. Sarah shows us how with simple, easy-to-implement steps. To find out more about Sarah Luce and her E3 Influence program, visit sarahluce.com. Tune in to the hit show, Raging Skillet Radio, mouthing off with Chef Rossi. Chef Rossi mouths off about different subjects in pursuit of breaking down walls and opening up your minds. She and Dr. Pat banter back and forth, taking from the headlines of the day on subjects that reach beyond what goes on in the world into your hearts. And go to theragingskillet.com to find out more and let Chef Rossi know what's on your mind. 
Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Potasik has a special gift for everyone out there. To receive three chapters of the Knowledge Book as a special gift, send your email to mmjp99 at gmail.com. That's M as in Mary, M as in Mary, JP99 at gmail.com now to receive this fabulous, fabulous gift of the Knowledge Book. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens with Colette Marie Steffen is excited to welcome Karen Benton as a monthly guest host. Tune in on the third Wednesday of each month at 8 a.m. Pacific Time to regain confidence and trust in your capacity to create change in your life, your health, your family, and your well-being. Karen Benton is a mother, nurse practitioner, certified body talk practitioner, Franklin Method instructor, and owner of Limitless Living, LLC. For more information about Karen, visit KarenBenton.com. Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to On The Verge Radio. I'm your host, Laura Richer, and I'm also the owner of Seattle Healing Hypnotherapy, Reiki, and Life Coaching. And I am here with my lovely co-host, Andy Lucas. Hello, Laura. And she is the owner of Hummingbird Marketing Services. And we are broadcasting here on Transformation Talk Radio yes, today. Yes, we are. So today we're continuing our series on self-esteem and learning what to do and what not to do when you are just out of a toxic relationship and you, t- you need to rebuild your self-esteem. You know, Steve Maraboli is a radio personality. He's an author. He has a lot to say. And one of the things that he said that I found especially poignant for this is that you should love yourself. Love yourself enough to take the actions required for your happiness, Mm -hmm. enough to cut yourself loose from the drama-filled past, enough to set a high standard for relationships, enough to feed your mind and body in a healthy manner, and enough to forgive yourself, and enough to move on. I love it. Yes. So why don't we – well, first of all, I just want to announce that the phone lines are open. So if anybody has any questions about their toxic relationship or their self-esteem or general questions for Laura about the weather, (laughs) uh, we'll take them. The phone number is 800. Why would they ask about the weather when I'm sitting right here? I'm just saying. It's look, sunny out today. It's sunny That's out. a sunny great in Seattle. That's all we need to say. Then. Sunny okay, in Seattle. On. <laughs> but why? Um, why is the sky blue? Because if it were green, we wouldn't know when to stop mowing. You know? Exactly. Um, 800-930-2819. So, Laura, let us jump right into okay. these seven do's and don'ts. So, number one is? So, reflect without judgment. That's the most important piece. But reflect on what you've learned through this yes. process. So don't beat yourself up for finding yourself in a situation that didn't work out. Just use it as an opportunity to learn something more about you and what is important to you in a relationship and what you don't want to have in a relationship so that you can move forward. What you don't want to do, this comes up all the time. I'm not even sure why, but don't question why you deserved that situation. Oh. Yes. How, you know, you didn't. You didn't deserve the situation. Maybe mm-hmm. there was a reason that you were there, something that attracted to it. Um, but I think when we get into the why did I deserve this mindset, it just sends you into victim mentality. You yeah. you are in control to how you respond to your circumstances. It's not about deserving. It's just about making different choices. No one deserves to be in an abusive relationship. Well, and that word that you use is very good, choices. Mm-hmm. So we, no one deserved to be in it. We chose to be in it. Yes. And maybe that's the real question. Why did I choose and to be in And that's going it? back to the, the reflection without judgment. So don't beat yourself up for choosing that. But do know that it is a choice and that you can choose something different. And you want to, in the reflection, you're trying to learn from it so you don't continue making the decision, making those choices again. Yeah. I think, you know, for me, after I got divorced, I took a lot of time to reflect on why that relationship didn't work out, what it was it about the relationship that I felt was unhealthy, what was it that drew me to a relationship that wasn't the healthiest for me. And some of those were just simple awarenesses that were just like, oh, I need to meet someone that's values are more in line with my values. It wasn't this exercise and just torturing myself of like, oh, I'm so stupid. How could I have done that? How could I have done that? Yeah. How could I have let this happen to me? Yeah. Or why yes. did I deserve this? You know, so as much as our minds want to go there, and I'm guilty of it, too. It's not mm-hmm. that I've never had that happen, but it's completely unproductive. It's not you just want to as objectively as possible, which is hard to be objective when our emotions are mm-hmm. involved. But say, you know, OK, I've had this experience. What am I going to take away from it? Yeah. And bad things happen. Yes. Life is not all peaches and cream. It's true. And 
to question why we deserve it is not going to be helpful. No. And we, you don't deserve we it. We don't deserve it. That's why we, we want to look for something different. Yeah. Exactly. So do reflect without judgment mm-hmm. on what you've learned and don't question why you deserve it. And I want to say something about that because I think there could be some pushback and somebody will say, I absolutely did not choose that. That's not what I wanted to have happen. But your response to what's happening is the part that's your choice. So if somebody is verbally or physically abusive to you and, yes, you didn't choose to have that happen, but you do after something, you, you're, you see what is happening in the relationship, you're choosing how you're going to respond. And if your response is staying, that's your choice. That's a choice, yeah. Exactly. Good. Very good point. What is number two? This, I think, is very uh, kind of like a question that people ask. It just seems like this uh, – out of reach mystical thing that exists that some people have and some people don't. And that is self-respect. So I have clients who, who say they don't like themselves. You know, how do I, how do I respect myself? How do I get self-respect? I don't have any. Well, I think that self-respect is a choice. It's not something that you're just, you know, like some of us got this magical self-respect energy and some of us don't. It's that I'm going to make choices that respect me. Yes. So again, it's back to choice. Having the confidence and having the confidence to do that. So So, choose to respect yourself, even if, you know, and sometimes it can be tricky because maybe you're in a relationship with somebody who's dysfunctional or you feel sorry for them and you feel like it's your duty to not respect yourself and take care of them. That's mostly always going to be a poor choice. Duty? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. I think that's duty. But it's a ch- self-respect is a choice. You're not. It's not a magical thing that some have and some don't. It's just choices you're making to take care of you. Yes. And what should they not do? Don't feel sorry for the person you left or even for yourself. Okay. Have you ever been tempted to feel sorry for yourself after a toxic relationship? I'm tempted to feel sorry for myself every day. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's easy to go to self-pity. It's easy to be like, oh, poor me. It's so difficult being me. I have had the same experience. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of the human experience. But I also try really hard not to allow it or indulge it for too long. And the times that I have indulged it for too long, unfortunately, were a waste of my time. Exactly. Yeah. What does Caroline Mace say? She says that sympathy is pity and pity is not love. That is correct. So if you were pitying someone that you're with, Mm -hmm. you might not be in the right situation. Correct. It's really – and I think it can be very dangerous because you you feel sorry for this person, so you're trying to take care of them and make everything okay for them, and you forget about taking yeah. care of yourself. Yeah, and that just isn't your job. It's so strange. Yeah. So do decide to have self-respect. Don't feel sorry for the person you left or even for yourself. And it's interesting that from an outside perspective, and I, we've all had girlfriends that have been in negative situations, and, and I see clients often too – that are really stuck. Um, I had one client who desperately wanted to leave her relationship, but the person that she was with had been unemployed for five years, fully capable person. They weren't, you know, right, sick or anything like that, um, but didn't work, had a negative childhood experience, and so she felt sorry for him. But in the process <laughs> of feeling sorry, she didn't want to be with him. She desperately wanted to leave. Right. But she could not pull the trigger because she felt sorry for him. And in the meantime, she is, you know, feeling very unhealthy, drinking too much, gaining weight, stressed out all the time. She wasn't making the choice to put herself first. She wasn't respecting herself. She wasn't respecting herself. And that and that particular situation um, was just it was hard to see why she didn't want to choose something different. But when you're in it, it is difficult. Oh, it's so hard. It's yeah. so hard to see. Yeah. Yeah. But this person was choosing to disrespect her and she was just allowing that allowing to happen. It. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, I've seen that. Um, and I've lived it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Number three in our do's and don'ts for rebuilding our self-esteem. Um, do think about what's important to you in a relationship. Yes. This is something I had to learn, um, and I work with clients all the time, is what are you looking for in a relationship? I think we watch movies and we see examples of relationships, and we think, oh, we'll just meet somebody and it'll all work out. Without <laughs> <laughs> Must be easy, right? Um, I have uh, told my parents that they are responsible for my divorce because they got along well, so I just thought I could get along with anybody, and Absolutely. it turned out that wasn't true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I think sometimes, you know, we need to have some clarity about what it is we're actually looking for. And you know what? These negative and toxic relationships, or even if it wasn't toxic, it just was a relationship that didn't work out, 
the value of those is it gets us really clear on what is important to us. So there is a benefit in having these experiences. And what we don't want, yes. too. Yes, yeah, and what we don't want. Because that's part of it, is yeah. like identifying what you want, but also what are you not willing to tolerate anymore? Yeah, exactly. Yes. So you have to sometimes have negative experiences to be a little more clear. So it all works out in the end. What should they not be doing? So what they don't want to do is focus on what you could have done better or how you could have changed yourself to make it work for somebody else. And Mm. a lot of times this is common for people who maybe are out of a a toxic relationship, but it wasn't their choice that maybe the other person is the one who decided to end the relationship. And so then they spend a lot of time questioning, you know, maybe if I hadn't gained weight or maybe if I was nicer or maybe if I had, you know, allowed something and really, and actually I had one client that I worked with that was allowing uh, really difficult behaviors in the relationship trying to make it work, mm. uh, opening up the relationship, with, which was not in line with her values oh, and things like that, yeah. and still pushed herself as hard as she could. And in the end, it didn't work out and was questioning herself about that. But that relationship was not in line with it. She wanted a monogamous relationship. Right. So she didn't need to have, figure out how to be in an open relationship. She needed to figure <laughs> out how to be in a relationship with somebody else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um is it good to kind of reflect on what I could have done differently? Not in term. It is. Yes. The answer to that question is yes. However, not what I could have done differently to stay in that relationship. I really believe if it was meant to work out, it would have worked out. Yeah. So I had a relationship when I was a teenager where I don't feel like my behavior was uh, the best version of me, my first boyfriend. And after that relationship, and I was very young, uh, refl- I thought, oh, gosh, you know, I really messed up and I should have done these things differently. And that part, you know, if that relationship was going to work out, it would have. But what I needed to do after that relationship is say, OK, I, I saw myself behave in these ways that are not conducive to having a good relationship and not who I want to be. So I'm right. going to change. You know, I'm going to work on those things. So in terms of making myself a better person, not in terms of going backwards. Got it. Yeah. So looking at it, how do I show up as my best yeah. self? Yes. And how do I stop? showing up not my best yeah because sometimes we can't blame the other person all the time sometimes it's us too yeah and it's good to reflect on those things i mean rarely but (laughs) (laughs) and it's really important i think we've talked about this before is that you want to choose someone who has the same values as you not the same interests yes interests are important yeah it's good to have some same same values are so important Yes, exactly. Yes. Not just someone who likes to listen to music, which was always my favorite. <laughs> someone who likes to listen to music and dance and play games. Like, well, that's board games yeah. and card games. Yeah. Like, those were my top three things. And it was like it said nothing about who I wanted to meet, just what they like to do. I was working with a client the other day who is in what seems to be a very healthy relationship. Um, but she, you know, they're going through some major life transitions. She's like, you know, He's just more of a big picture guy. I'm really detail focused. We don't work in the same way. She's like, I just don't know if it's going to work out. And I was like, okay, well, tell me a little (laughs) bit more. And so I started asking her some questions. And what she revealed through the conversation is they have all of the same values in terms of family and relationship. You know, they just approach life in a different way. And that is completely, that can work. Yes. That's kind of about figuring out how to work together. Yeah. But they have the same end goal. Right. But you can be in a relationship with someone who has the same same approach to you as you and totally different end goals and yes. it's not going to go anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, number four is an interesting one. So do take responsibility for your part, but don't beat yourself up for staying too long or being there in the first place. So those sound kind of conflicting, right? But they're not. Right. So taking responsibility is, again, making sure that you don't see yourself as a victim. You know, you made a choice to be in this situation, you made a choice to behave a certain way or allow behaviors in your relationship. And so take responsibility of that only for the reason not to beat yourself up, but so that you know that you can choose not to do that again. Right. So responsibility is just knowing that we are at choice, that we can choose something different for ourselves, that we're not victims. And we should be reflecting on this and taking responsibility without judgment of ourselves. So always be nice to ourselves. Yes. Because, again, if judging was to help you, I would say do it. But it doesn't help anything. <laughs> it, does it just help keeps you all. stuck in the same pattern. You have said that we only get there when we get there. Mm-hmm. So we're only ready to leave a relationship when we're ready. Yeah. And we can only quit smoking when we're ready to quit smoking and mm-hmm. all of those things. So 
there's no point in beating yourself up for how long you've stayed. And everyone feels like they've been they that they should be psychic and know how the relationship was going to turn out. <laughs> so I can look at past relationships and go, well, uh, clearly in year one, it, I could have seen that it was all going to fall apart. Well, yes, that's true with all of the information I have right now. But yes. I didn't have that information in year one. I needed to get to year 10 before I was like, OK, now it's clear to me this isn't going to work out. Yes. So that's it takes the amount of time that it's going to take. That it takes. Yeah. And there is no certain amount of time for anybody. Mm -hmm. It's whatever it takes. Right. And that's OK. And you learned a lot of life lessons in that experience. Yes. And they might not have all been positive experiences, but you learned a lot from it. So so value that and be proud of yourself yeah. for making the choice to leave when you do. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Congratulate yourself yeah. and know that you're in a rebuilding phase. Yes. <laughs> yes. So number four is do take responsibility for your part, but don't beat yourself up for mm -hmm. staying too long or being there in the first place. Yes. Very, very important. Beating yourself up never helps anything. Nothing. So what is number five, Laura, in our steps to rebuild our self-esteem? Especially when your self-esteem has taken a hit. Hang out with your biggest fans, your friends, your family, the people who love you and support you. And, you know, if you don't have a lot of those people in your life, just to hang out with the ones. Who, if there's yes. only one or two, that's perfectly fine. Maybe it's your dog. I don't know. But be with <laughs> the people that make you feel really good. You just need to build back up that good energy and feel supported, yes. especially after you've been with someone who's been taking you down. Absolutely. Because you can feel like in that relationship, it mm -hmm. can feel like I'm not good enough. I'm not enough. I'm stupid, whatever all of these things are that you're hearing that's right. pushed yourself self-esteem down so low. So it's really good um, to remember there are people who love you. There yes. are people who support you, and mm -hmm. it's important to be around them. And and make an effort to do that. And Friends what, are always great for that. Girlfriends are always right there to say, you were too good for him yeah, anyway. He yeah, he didn't deserve you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you um, need that. You need that after a toxic relationship. So really rely on your uh, support system during that time. What should you not do, conversely? So... As much as it's great to connect with your support system, don't spend all of your time in a state of distraction. Take some time to reflect. Don't try to escape yourself or this experience. So don't go to happy hour every single night so that you don't have a second alone. Don't overbook your calendar so that you're busy every second of the day. Don't start working 18 hours a day. Take some time to be able to reflect. Don't totally distract. Don't jump right back into a relationship. Yes, that's a very Maybe important Maybe not even idea. date for a little bit. For a little bit, yes. yes. Don't be frantically online looking for your next relationship. Yeah, obsessing over all of your Tinder matches. That's right. that's a huge distraction. He didn't swipe left. He didn't swipe, left. He didn't yeah. swipe right. Yeah. Who knows? Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? And social so. media, too, can be another form of distraction. I yes. Actually, when I work with clients on uh, issues around dating in the Richer Love program, which Ooh. is my dating yes. program, I ask them to get off of social media so that they can just kind of clear the clutter in their minds. If you're distracted by social media all the time, you're not processing Ugh. what you need to work on. Yes. Can you tell us briefly about the Richer Love Program? So the Richer Love Program is a program that is designed to help women get ready to date. So if you've been in a toxic relationship and there's some limiting beliefs and negative thought patterns that you need to clean up, um, or if you're just afraid to get out there, uh, you just want some practical dating advice because you haven't been out there for like the last 30 years. Yeah. You know, there's all kinds of different clients I work with, but it's it's around dating and manifesting your soulmate, looking for the right relationship. And it's a three month program. Correct. Yes. Fantastic. And they can go to richerlove.com and check it if out. If you want more information, sign up for the newsletter, that kind of thing. So, number six, Laura, in our self esteem building steps learn to be alone and learn to enjoy being alone. And that mm. can be a tall order for some people who do not like to be alone and they can't imagine enjoying their own company. However, if you can't enjoy your own company, why would anyone else? <laughs> if you cannot <laughs> stand... Very good question. Yeah. So you are going to want to learn how to do that first. That's going to be a very important step in the process. Why is it, why is it important? Well, like I said, if you don't like being with yourself... We need to know why that is, first of all, because there's obviously some work to be done around that. That's a, definitely an indicator of, of maybe low self-worth, low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And also, if you don't believe your company is enjoyable, the person that you're going to attract to you isn't going to believe it either. Yeah. They're not going to want to be around you either. <laughs> yeah. And then you're going to find yourself with somebody who doesn't want to be in a relationship. Exactly. And then you'll be back in self bad self-esteem. So, yes. yes. And it's I think it's easy for people to view being alone as being very uncomfortable yeah. and kind of scary. 
Or if they're not frantically trying to find somebody, they feel like they're going to miss their opportunity to have a relationship. FOMO. Yeah. So it's okay to want a relationship, but you don't want to be needy for it. And if you're in a needy place, like I need somebody here right now or I'm going to die, that's just don't date during that time. You know, we have talked about that in the past. And after I got out of a long-term relationship, I took about two years where I didn't date and I really reflected on coming to terms with what was my part and Mm -hmm. what had I done with it. And I feel like that gave me, that put me in a better mindset for when I did go back out dating because I wasn't so desperate to find somebody to just have the relationship or, you know, be my plus one somewhere or any of that stuff. I was really looking for a compliment to my life, not someone to fill it. And not to just grab just anyone, just to have somebody. Yes, but to find the right person. Yes. Yeah, exactly. A richer love. I wanted to find a richer love. Exactly. (laughs) And there is, so you have said that there's a lot of critical information that you can find when you're spending time alone. What, how do you, how does that work? Well, it gives you time to reflect, process the experiences that you have, think about why those experiences happen in the first place, if they're unwanted experiences, get really clear about the direction that you want to go. I think a lot of times negative things will come up and we just kind of don't even know where we're going. We're just responding to what shows up in our environment. Yes. So maybe to be really, um, to be more intentional about what it is that you're trying to create or what type of person you want to have in your life. And you don't have to spend hours alone meditating in a cave or something like that. But, <laughs> you know, you want to be, you want to be okay you know, on a, a Saturday afternoon if you don't have plans Just enjoying your own company. Yes. Maybe you go to a movie by yourself or maybe you go to get coffee and hang out at Starbucks for whatever it is. Yeah. Take a walk around the lake or walk around the neighborhood. And if you feel really uncomfortable doing that, if you feel really uncomfortable with your own company, you're going to want to know why that is. So at that point, should what would your advice be? Start journaling. Start asking yourself some questions. What would be some good questions to ask yourself if you're really afraid of being alone? So some, I think journaling is a great idea to say, what is it about this experience that is so uncomfortable, uncomfortable for me? Is it the lack of another warm body sitting next to me? Is it that I'm afraid I'm never going to find anybody? Is it, a, you know, that I, you know, it's different for everyone. But mm-hmm. to see, just be with that. What is it about being in my own company that is uncomfortable to me? Yeah. And if you can't figure that out, then call a coach or a therapist or a healer of some kind, whatever resonates with you. To help you get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Yeah. Your tarot cards read. Whatever it is, try to find something that will help you open up that, whatever that block is that's that's making you uncomfortable being with yourself. Yeah. Especially if you're not able to answer it yourself. Yes. Yeah. Which sometimes we can't. Sometimes, you know, we we just feel bad, but we're not quite sure why. Yeah. And working with someone can help you peel away the layers and see what that's all about so that you can heal it and resolve it so that when you are with somebody that they're going to love your company because you do. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So that's do learn to be alone and learn to enjoy being alone and don't try to avoid the uncomfortableness. Yes. So then our final uh, step is number seven. What is that one, Laura? Do give yourself permission to love again and don't shut down. Um. This is So some people want to jump in right away. Some people throw up a wall and say, you know what? It was really ugly. I am not going there again. Yeah. And those people, I think, are, you know, and if you genuinely just don't want to be in a relationship, that's fine. There's all kinds of different ways to live your life. But if that's not the truth of who you are, if you really do want to connect with someone else, you can do the work to know that you've learned from that past experience and that you don't have to repeat it. You don't have to shut yourself down to experience in life with a really great person just because you've had a bad experience. Right. And that kind of goes back to what you said before to you through this, if as long as you're rebuilding your Mm self-esteem, you're reflecting on what you've learned, you're changing, Mm -hmm. you're, you're changing your, you know, how you, you see the world and you're not going to make the same choices. again. Right. So I've had clients before say to me, I just always pick the wrong guy. I cannot be trusted to pick somebody because I always pick the wrong guy. But if you have some insights about why that is, if you reflect on, you know, what type of people you're choosing and maybe why that's not the right fit for you, there's a good chance you can make a different choice and that you can learn to trust yourself. 
So I think people that shut down really don't trust themselves after a negative experience, that they can make a good choice for themselves in the future. And that absolutely is not true if you do the work to reflect and identify why you found yourself in that place in the first exactly. place. I also think that someone who chooses to shut down, who genuinely does want a relationship but is too scared to go there, does have low self-esteem, that they're feeling like they don't deserve a good relationship for some reason, and that shuts them down, and they feel like, well, I'll just opt out because I'm not going to yeah, get what I want anyway. They're part of that 70% who feel like they're not good enough for yeah, anyone. And what a high number that is. We don't. We want to get that number down because that is not true. I know. It, it, it made me feel kind of sad. And when we were talking about that, like, have have you had bouts of your life where you feel like you, you didn't deserve anyone or you didn't, you were unlovable? I think I've had, no, I don't think I've ever felt unlovable. I've had frustrations where my life wasn't going the direction that I wanted. And so I was frustrated with that. Yeah. I think for me more, uh, I would be more prone to falling into victim mentality. So yes. I like these things just keep happening to me and I don't know why. Right. So I believed I deserved something better, but I wasn't aware that it was the choices I was making that were creating the results but I was you getting. You were actually in charge of it. Yes, yes. exactly. Okay. And once I did realize that, I was kind of upset because then it meant that I had made decisions that were yielding results I didn't want. But it's also very empowering to know that I could change that. And I did change that. I made very different decisions Absolutely. after a past relationship and landed in a good one, as did you. Absolutely. Yeah, after you, I think that 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 first part. So the that first step is reflecting without judgment on what you've learned. That is so critical. Yeah, and to be able to accept responsibility. That's another big part of it. Yeah, because like you said, these are all our own choices. We're not. Nobody deserves this. No. Nobody's, and no one's actively choosing a bad relationship. Right. But they're choosing to stay. And the the thing that I think is very powerful that we touched on earlier as well is choose self-respect. Self-respect is a choice. It's not something that you're born with. It, it's the choices that you make to respect you. Just like we choose to respect other people, why not make those choices for yourself as well? Why not? And staying with someone who's harmful to you is not respecting is, – is a choice to not respect yourself. Exactly. So. And make sure you're spending time with your biggest fans, the people who love you. Yes. So we've mentioned a couple of things here today. We've mentioned your Richer Love program, mm-hmm. and people can go to richerlove.com to find out more information about that three-month program to help women uh, get back on the dating scene and find their their love. And so this program is spe- especially designed for women, um, all different circumstances, but a lot of the women that I work with in this program are women who found themselves single at a time that they didn't anticipate being single They're probably out of a relationship that was toxic or just didn't work out. Um, So they have some processing to do to let go of the old hurts and the old wounds so that they're in a really good place with their self-esteem. So when they get out on the dating scene that they have a really fun time because dating can be a lot of fun. It absolutely can be fun if you go in it with the right mindset. And if uh, someone is interested in booking a consultation with you, you mentioned you have the complimentary consultation. What is the number they can call? 206-765-8265. There's a complimentary hour consultation. You can talk to our scheduler who will get you on the calendar. And you can come into the office on Queen Anne or we can talk over the phone or via Skype and see how Seattle Healing or the Richer Love Program might be able to help you. Fantastic. Well, Laura, it's been fantastic talking with you today. Thank you, Andy. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to On The Verge Radio here on Transformation Talk Radio. You've been listening to On The Verge Radio, using your breakdown for a breakthrough with Coach Laura Richer. We all have that moment in life when we are on the verge of big change. This time of transition is a wild and unknown place. How will you show up? Embrace the positive, drop the negative, and you can experience total transformation. Schedule a breakthrough session with Laura at seattlehealinghypnosis.com. Laura will help you discover the path to creating rapid and positive changes. Tune in every month for On The Verge Radio with Laura Richard. 